Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Meredith Bond from the City News Digital team, and I'm joined today by the Psychedelic Frontier producer, Pat Tanny, Patrick Molden, the main subject of the documentary, and Mac Mark Howard, CEO of Iboga Soul, one of the companies featured in last night's documentary. Uh, for more information on the docu documentary, or if you uh, didn't get a chance to watch it last night, uh, the link in the description uh, will take you there, and you can read all about the other stories we've posted over the last week. Um, so for today, uh, Pat and Mark and Patrick will be answering all your questions live. If you would like to ask a question, you can simply just write it in the comments and we will hopefully have the chance to answer. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, just to start off, Pat, what was your experience like shooting this documentary? Yeah, so this was a very interesting journey, and uh, we began research in this uh, late last year, uh, really taking a look at, I'm sorry, early last year, taking a look at um, mental health. That's what we approached. We wanted to do a documentary about mental health. We thought it was important. I I've spoken to many experts who said we're, we're facing a crisis right now when it comes to mental health. And the more I did research, I kept coming across psychedelics on message boards, um, research studies that are showing uh, this is a, could be a breakthrough treatment in, in uh, mental for mental health issues, PTSD, anxiety, and uh, depression. And the more we looked into it, uh, we were surprised and just amazed by the amount of studies that have been done uh, by Johns Hopkins University, NYU, showing incredible promise that in these clinical trials showing things like psilocybin, MDMA are really um, helping to treat mental health and study participants. So from there, uh, we started casting a wide net to try and find people who have either tried psychedelics, um, experts who are studying this on the front lines, and we wanted to really be Canadian focused. So we, we hit companies that are based here in uh, Canada. And that's how I met uh, Mark Howard with Ibogasol. And uh, he hooked me up with Patrick Molden, who uh, I hope if you watched the documentary, you saw his incredible story. Uh, this is a man who served our country in Afghanistan, witnessed some pretty horrific things, and was willing to take a psychedelic, uh, one he really was hoping was going to change his life, and invited our cameras to document the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patrick, what's been the response since the documentary aired last night? You were mentioning you've heard you've heard from a lot of people since it aired less than 24 hours ago. Yeah, it seems like every time I look at my phone, I've got a new email or text or um, a lot of support from a lot of my friends, you know, that I haven't seen or heard of for a lot of years, but also a lot of interest from people that I've never even met or, or um uh, you know, asking me about, you know, how to get in contact with Mark, you know, just questions about the whole process and showing a lot of interest in it. So it, it uh, feels, it feels good to, um, you know, um, shine a light on this and uh, hopefully help some people that were, that are suffering that don't need to be. Mm -hmm. What do you think people hope, uh, uh, what do you hope people got from hearing your story? Um, that, that, that there's, there's another option, you know, like the, traditional 12 step recovery. It's not for everybody, you know, like there's not one way to recover, to get sober. That's right for, for, you know, every single person out there. So it's an option. It's a tool in the toolbox and um, it's worth exploring. If you, if, you know, you, 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 you feel like you're beating your head against the wall mm -hmm. um, and mental health, uh, you know, the men mental health and addiction kind of go, go hand in hand and it can, it can shine a light into some dark places that for you and help you process it in a way that is then um, enables you to let it go and put it behind you. And so it's not like you're operating the rest of your life kind of dragging a ball and chain behind you or with one foot stuck in the door, you know, you, it sort of allows you to face whatever that darkness was, sever that tide, let it go and move on with your life with a, 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 like a restart, you know? So um, yeah, I would I recommend it for anybody, and uh, you know I mean it's a like I said it's a tool and and it and it gives hope and it's it's a plant for God's sake it comes from the earth you know what I mean it's not it's not a pharmaceutical nightmare that leads you to other pharmaceutical nightmares you know it's a it's a it's a way out you know it's a one time kind of a thing and that you know you know you know you don't have to go to the fucking pharmacy sorry. <laughs> And, you know, re-up your methadone prescription every, however, you know, it's, so I don't know. Yeah, trauma, it's, um, well, I've talked about that already. I don't know, ask me some more questions. 
Um, talking about the plant a little bit, um, Mark, uh, could you explain a little bit about iboga if someone didn't catch the documentary last night? Um, it's a natural plant medicine from the earth. It actually comes from the, a root of a plant called iboga. Um, you know, it's, it's grown in Africa. I, I mean, they're, they are growing at different places in the world and things like that, but it, 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 mean, it retains its real good medicinal qualities, um, which are classified as an alkaloid. Um, it's very powerful. You, you have to, you know, really learn how to use it. So I studied in Africa and I studied in Costa Rica and I spent, you know, years training to study to use it before I used it. Um, but it has a very profound effect at allowing someone to go uh, into a space where they can access, you know, deep memories and, and deep consciousness, which clears away the sort of like the clutter and the clatter and allows someone to contact themselves, their own soul, to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with themselves and really get, you know, a clear view of, you know, what's going on with them in their life. Mm -hmm. How did it differ from other psychedelics that might be more well-known like LSD or mushrooms? Um, like, you know, Meredith, how do you differ from me? Um, your hair is a little different. You have dimples. I notice I don't. Um, you're, you're female. I mean, you're a human. I'm a human. You know, plant medicine and plant medicine, but we're, we're different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's really hard to sort of classify. And the one good thing about iboga is, you know, it allows the person to experience, uh, to, to witness an experience that's individual to themselves. Each one of those medicines offer that. They, they're like, like Pat said um, about having a tool in a toolbox. You know, iboga sits on top of a pretty mighty plant medicine throne because it's very powerful in accessing not only the physical and the spiritual, and it, and it has a lot of uh, qualities that, you know, that allows someone to really clean and their life out and, and start a new path. All these medicines have their abilities to do that. So they're all unique. I would say um, it's really hard to compare them like apple and oranges. Mm -hmm. I would say they're, the, the word I like to use is complementary, and they have um, each have a sort of a, a role and that they can be used to help people evolve um, or become more, um, spiritually aware which allows them to live their life to the more fuller capacity mm -hmm. uh, this could be a question for both uh, mark or patrick um what made you want to participate in this documentary i'll start um i've worked for you know i've been working for about 10 years uh with the medicine like i said about four years training and about six years working with hundreds of clients um, I have another documentary called Dosed, where I was, um, you know, really involved with working with a lot of really heavy addictions. Um, as time progressed, the, the fentanyl crisis, you know, has replaced heroin and made things extremely difficult. Um, and so I pushed myself to the limits of what I can, what I can do. So the next um, arena that I needed to enter as, you know, a gladiator of plant medicines was to get the word out to as many people as possible to say, hey, look, Look, at, there's something here that works. Let's get the research done. Let's get people on board. Let's change the way people are, are, are using um, uh, the modalities of healing towards mental health. And then let's create like an army of love to sort of go after this and, and actually make a real serious change. Mm -hmm. And Patrick? Uh, sorry, what was the question? Why, why did I get involved? <laughs> yeah, well, what made you want to participate? Yeah, well, Mark, first of all, is my best friend. Uh, we've been friends for, for years and years, and I've seen him um, save so many lives, you know? And um, so so he, we, we've we been in touch, you know, even though I live in Hamilton, Ontario now, uh, we stay in, in pretty close contact. And um, he, he knew, you know, that I was struggling and presented me with, with this um, opportunity. And uh, I trusted him. Uh, I do trust him with my life. And so I said, of course, let's do it. Because what I'm doing obviously is not working. And, and I know that you can, you can help me and uh, save my life, like straight up. <laughs> mm -hmm. How have you been doing since the documentary aired? If you well, like to share. Oh, since it aired? Yeah. Like yesterday? Or no, sorry, since, since it was first shot in the months, uh, yeah. Since, well, I mean, every day, every day, like I say, like, you know, after my Afghanistan experience, every day above ground is a good day, you know? So <clears throat> every sober day on top of that is like a gift, like really, really a gift. And, and 
being so far in such a dark place for so long, you know, to experience that, that sobriety is still just, uh, seems like a miracle, but, um, it, 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 so exciting. Like, like every day, the challenges, the everyday challenges, you know, that mm -hmm. come up for everybody every second of the day are, are not like a life altering chaotic situation for me anymore. You know, it's mm -hmm. fun and, uh, life is good. And I've, love sleeping i love waking up i love uh having gratitude for life and all the things that you know you that you take for granted um you lose sight of their importance when you're in active addiction it's really tragic so yeah. and if i can jump in uh meredith just from yeah, seeing patrick uh, you know patrick we first met over the summer and yeah. i just you know from that interview i mean you had the entire film crew in tears uh because you are a very expressive person and, and we could see the pain, we could see the anguish and we could see the desperation and to see where you are today um, is remarkable. And, you know, we've been checking in with you even after we finished filming over those uh, several months and uh, you're running again, um, you're back into artwork. Um, what was it about the iboga? And, and I know you mentioned it in the doc that, you know, this wasn't, oh, I, I take a bunch of medicine and I'm better. Uh, but what was it specifically, do you think, if you can walk the viewers through the, the post after we left you at that art show, um, how the iboga continued to help you? Well, like I said, um, it, it, I, I, I think of it as like, um, like a reboot, you know, like dumping, uh, dumping all of the old garbage files that's building up in your hard drive, you know, that's slowing down your system and, and, and you know, not, not allowing you even to take a full breath, you know, it's like flushing all that out. And I, I feel lighter. I feel, I feel excited. I feel like, like energized to be able to be in a, in a, in a place, a state of mind, physical and mental, where I can strive for things again, you know, like uh, outside of my military career, when I lost that, I, I was so devastated. And I didn't even realize for a long time that, that my whole career, my whole life, I was always trying to get to the next level, you know, and achieve things within the military that, that, that most people weren't able to do. And, and um, so to not have that anymore uh, or anything really to, to, to push myself, you know, I feel like I have that now, you know, and, and, it, and, and at the, at the beginning of every day, if that, if that is, is just simply expressing gratitude, you know, for the bed that I got to sleep in last night and the sleep that I got, you know, that's a, a much better way to start off my day and face things than, than um, <laughs> hating life, you know, <laughs> looking for the next fix or just like being distracted by something that's not my, not <clears throat> in line with my, with my true destiny. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I don't still maybe really know what that is, like if it's art or whatever, but I'm not worried about it because I'm moving in the right direction towards whatever that is. And it's, and it's exciting. <laughs> it feels really good to be, to be clean and, and to be proud, to be able to look myself in the mirror and, and like what I see and I take care of my body and my temple. And yeah, like, I don't know, <laughs> yammering, but it's great. <laughs> So we have actually have a question from the audience that's kind of on the same line. What happens next? Is this an ongoing treatment or is it just the once and then it, you kind of, it works from there? I, um, you know, what people saw in the documentary um, <clears throat> in terms of the psycho-spiritual was like, you know, it's sort of like, let's say, you know, someone comes in and they've got a massive wound. You have to get in there and clean it all out, you know, and um, before the healing can even start. You know what I mean? And then you got to go to the doctors and get the bandage changed and, you know, while it's healing, get it flushed out and get it cleaned. And then even after that, you got to, it takes time to heal. Pat, Pat has been doing medicine with me. You know, it, it was like, there's so much more that was going on behind the scenes, this whole thing, but it's, it's great. We show it, but afterwards we've done a boga probably, you know, seven times or something or six times, like maybe smaller amounts, but not microdosing amounts, but bigger than micro in between just to constantly keep in check and keep cleaning it out and keep, keep in check. Just like that. This is an ongoing therapy is, is, I mean, really you need to recover uh, for the rest of your life. You don't need like a, a one-year plan or a two-year plan. You need like a rest of your life plan. 
-hmm. Sometimes that's hard to tell people in the beginning because it becomes too much to chew at first. So, you know, just let's take the first step. Let's go through one iboga journey. Let's see where we can get. But the reality is that we need a lot of people on board and a lot of support to continually help people stay in check with their healing and, you know, and to not allow that wound to open back up and fester. Mm -hmm. Um, Pat, I was going to ask you, what was the most interesting thing you learned while shooting this documentary? The most interesting thing I learned was um, honestly watching Patrick's journey and seeing someone who initially um, was hurting so much. And then we really were, were using him to pose the question, can psychedelics treat mental health conditions? And, and I think Patrick and everyone will agree with me that um, he was in a really bad spot. Um, so we didn't know which way it was going to go. And to witness him, you know, going through the therapy before and, and getting the health checks before and, and getting cleaned up um, from his addiction before uh, in itself is monumental. And then also exposing yourself to the world and undergoing the ceremony where you're not sure if there's going to be a good end result or not. Um, I, I think that was the most interesting thing to me. Uh, other side notes just the entire industry, how much it's grown over the past year. I mean, we had, when we casted the net, as I told you in the beginning, there were so many companies, too many to count, that have been launched uh, in, in the past year, um, trying to get into the psychedelic arena. And, and what's interesting is that this huge movement is gaining so much traction right now, um, based on the scientific studies I cited at the top of this conversation. And these, you know, now we have Canadian companies like Numinous uh, that are on the front lines. You know, they, they just received uh, approval through Health Canada to study psilocybin mushroom, psilocybin, the psychoactive compound in magic mushroom. So the entire movement um, and, and the push right now to, to take these drugs from underground to mainstream was eye opening. I mean, I, I came into this like many who probably watched the documentary last night thinking, you know, magic mushrooms or LSD. Sure, people may have tried those in university. They were a thing of the 60s. Uh, they treat mental health, what? Uh, you know, and I got a lot of comments from, from people I know or on Facebook and messages saying, well, I should be cured of depression from my years in university because of my experiences <laughs> with psychedelics. Um, but that's not what it's about. It's not, and I think Patrick and Mark alluded to this. The other interesting thing was, I think the misconception is that you go out and you take psilocybin or iboga and you're better. Um, and, and, you know, why it's called psychedelic assisted therapy is the fact that it assists other traditional therapeutic methods. So yes, you have to, you still do some of the hard work. You still have to meet with a therapist, but as Patrick mentioned and watching him go through this, what it did was allowed him to take a deep dive into himself uh, revisit some pretty horrible places, which none of us want to do, but this medicine, things like iboga and psilocybin, from what I understand, help you revisit those places and see them from a different point of view and realize that neither your present nor your future need to be defined by past moments, no matter how horrifying they are. So the whole thing for me uh, was incredibly just eye-opening, and it'll be very interesting to see where the industry goes from this. What do you think the biggest hurdle um, in bringing psychedelic drugs from kind of the underground to the mainstream is um, besides illegality? So it's um, the studies. Uh, we still need more conclusive studies. I, I think uh, Dr. Roger McIntyre made that clear in the documentary. The other issue, which we also touched upon in the, in the show, is the scientists on the front lines right now have to be very, very careful. And if anything were to go wrong with clinical studies, um, in their science, um, how they take care of these mushrooms, any of that stuff uh, can be detrimental to the entire industry. So I think you have people who are, very, <clears throat> excuse me, very responsible about this, uh, really working hard to make sure what they're doing is ethical and stays above the, the law and the rules. And, um, you know, they really want to make sure they, they're going to get it this time because, you know, clinical trials have been done decades before and they kind of were swept under the rug. Uh, this time you've got a lot more money involved and you have a lot of real scientists backing this. So I, I think uh, like Dr. Evan Wood said, there's every possibility that we might see psychedelic assisted therapy legal in Canada in the next two to three years. 
Wow. So, oh, that quickly, I was going to say, where do you kind of see the market being in five years? Is yeah. it going to be something that it's like cannabis now? Yeah. And that's what they're, they're comparing it to. Um, you know, we spoke with uh, a financial expert who, who's been talking with investors and they see it as going down the same route. Um, one thing that's different about this where cannabis, for most psychedelics at least, for cannabis, um, you know, that's a product you can develop and sell to a client who uses it daily, weekly, and they'll keep coming back to get the medicine. Psychedelics is different. Psychedelics is not a, okay, I'm a pharmaceutical company, I'm going to get involved because you're going to be on this medicine for weeks and years to come. So you're going to keep refilling your prescription and we're going to keep making money. That's not where the money is. And this, the money is in the labs, the money is in the clinics that are going to be developed. The, um, you know, the idea is that we're going to see psychedelic therapy clinics, much like Mark has and Ibogasol down in Costa Rica, where you'll go and it's almost like a retreat. So they're, they're psychedelic spas, but on board are medical staff, therapists who will actually walk you through the experience. So for some people, it might be, I'm going to go to a clinic, I'm depressed and I'm going to take psilocybin um, and I'm only going to need like one massive trip to understand my depression and get better from that. But you'll stay three, four days, five days, whatever the models they'll, they'll create in this psychedelic spa and go through the post therapy and understand a little bit more about the experience you had. So that's where the money's going to be in this. So it'll be very interesting. Like I said, so many companies are out there right now, all racing to the finish line, all trying to figure out what is the best model to make money here. Uh, but I think most are in agreement that clinics are going to be a big moneymaker. Mm -hmm. Mark, do you anticipate seeing an increase in requests about information about your company, iBogasol? Uh, um, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I had, a, a, it's one of the things that led, like I have another documentary, like I said, called Dosed Out, and I got a lot of, you know, and it's hard to watch and, and not be able to like help these people. It's, it's, um, that's why it's good that the public awareness is going out right now. And it's, I know in my heart, it's like I've seen way too much success. I, like I don't need clinical trials to tell me what's up. It's great and I'm, I can't wait for it to happen. I'd love to be a part of the research, but it's just, it's so blatantly obvious. I would, you know, that's why I put myself out here. I would double, triple down on this. I mean, it's, it's just the way it works. And yeah, I expect to see, um, <laughs> of course, right? Like, I mean, water is gonna find its own level. And, you know, every stream leads to a river, leads to an ocean. And, you know, it's a cycle. It evaporates to the sky and it rains. Like it's, it's, it's going to run to the source of truth. That's where we're all going. And so this is just a, a main line to truth, right? So definitely there's going to be more people inquiring because it works. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We've gotten a few nice comments actually on our Facebook Live. I'm just going to read a few of them out. Uh, D said, wow, Patrick, your soul is shining. So glad for your journey of healing and making it through such a dark time to come out and see your true worth. And another from Kim who said, it's so great to see natural therapy and plant medicine moving into the mainstream again. So that's kind of the goal that you see is to have these drugs be used as a mainstream treatment for mental health and addiction, correct? Yep. And, and how, how does that work to someone who might, who might be suffering from those um, those conditions and want to try this out, what would they do? How could they go about getting access to this? Um, I, th I think they can reach out. What we're doing now is like, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain one plan that I, I, I think is, is really important to decide here to understand. Anyone like, so there's the addictions, underneath an addiction is a trauma and pain but there's a physical nature to an addiction. If someone's on a substance that needs to be taken care of. And that's what I call pre-tox. So you need these, you know, say you have a rehab center that's medically um, sort of institutionalized, medically overwatched, people can be saved. They have medically assisted doctors that can help people get onto things that could take them off the street drugs. And then they use like Ibogaine or these um, powerful medicines to slowly step somebody off. So it's called pre-tox. You need to get someone safely clean first. Right, and that's where a lot of these uh, these uh, centers will pop up, you know, because then what's next is like a center where someone can go and go through what I call a detox and then a psycho spiritual. Um, so it's it's going to be someone finding out, you know, what is it that they want to come for, 
is it is it an addiction to food? Like if it's an addiction to food, you might not need to go to a fully medically assisted um, pre-tox. You still might, but you might be, you know you might be able to go to a center where you can just have space and time around good people. But it's going to be um, categor categorically organizing this uh, movement into the proper um, steps that's necessary to get someone from here where they you know are having trouble and struggling to here where they're like you know shining and dancing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, I want to jump in here if I can, Meredith, the, yeah, you know, Patrick, one of the things we discussed uh, way back when we first met was your, you know, passion behind this also was for other war veterans, um, because you know what you saw in Afghanistan and many, many others have witnessed similar horrors. Um, what do you hope in that regard for, for, med for uh, military veterans like yourself who have come back from the battleground, how do you think psychedelic assisted therapy can help them? Well, um, the suicide rate uh, it, it is higher than the total number of soldiers that were actually killed in Afghanistan. And, and that statistic alone is begging for, for something radical to change. Uh, more guys have killed themselves than were actually killed in combat over the course of that mission, <clears throat> you know, that's a, that's a very sad, sad statistic. And that's kind of like uh, my, because, you know, I lost my career, you know, I lost my career to a mental health injury. And I think that that, that could have been prevented, that that could have been handled a different way. You know, like if I, if I was, if I was treated properly, instead of, you know, heavily medicated with pharmaceuticals, because once I got heavily medicated with all the pharmaceuticals that they had prescribed to me, I was then um, no longer able to do my job. Like I was then categorized as a medically unfit. I was a diver in the Navy and you, you, you have to be totally clean and, and above the medical standard to be able to do that job. So, so once I was diagnosed with this mental health injury and then prescribed all these pills, I was then medically found unfit to do that. And ultimately that, that led to me losing my career. I got medically released, and I mean, so I think that if 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 there was a if there was a, a, a better way to do that to retain the member and not lose the whole career, your identity, your you know your your lifestyle, you, you know your. I mean, I I was I was and I joined when I was eighteen for God's sake, you know, like I had twenty five plus years and and then all of a sudden just gone because of something that's completely out of my control. It just seemed unfair and. Um, I see this now as a, as a much better way to, to do, to go about doing this. And I'm not saying that it's going to be right for everybody, but it's an option, you know, that is worth exploring to retain people's careers and lives instead of just medicating pharmaceutically and then releasing with the pat on the box and see you later, you know, like that whole, that whole process just seemed, just seemed not right at all. And, you know like the like this 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 way you know i think that it, i mean it's pretty radical it's pretty drastic but so are the times that we're living in right right the answer mm -hmm. um well we're just about to wrap things up but if there's any final words any of you had to say maybe pat can start just about the documentary last anything you'd like to share with the audience I just think if you haven't watched it yet, uh, do yourself a favor and, and take a look. CityTV.com, you can see um, the psychedelic frontier. Um, you know, I th think it really captures the moment we're in right now um, w with psychedelics and where we can possibly go with this. And, you know, the question is still out there. Is this the, the best answer? Um, I, I think you know, based on Patrick's experience, he'll say yes, uh, but Patrick also touched on that maybe this isn't for everyone, uh, but it is, as he mentioned, worth exploring. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, where this goes. I think, you know, from the experts I spoke with when it comes to treating mental health, you know, we haven't had real breakthroughs in antidepressants in years and years and years, and for some people, they just don't work. So it'll be interesting to see as more clinical trials come out uh, where this industry will go. Any final words, uh, Mark or Patrick? I'll let Pat speak last. Listen, if there's someone out there, you know, listening to this or sees it, just, you know, know that, you know, what we were showing that, you know, everyone has a light inside them, like this candle, you know, your soul, you have a light and, you know, with depression and drugs and all this kind of stuff, it, it you know, and you and the way you speak to yourself, it can really, you know, dim that light, you know, you can cover that light up, you know? So I just, you know, let, 
start talking to yourself nicely and let this message show you that that light start using your light to like shine your way and just have trust that your soul can help you find the avenue that's going to suit you best be patient but be vigilant there is a way there is a way and 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 you need to let your light shine some light on that path and begin to take the steps towards it it will happen well said yeah and just just to add to that um from my own perspective that light that mark's talking about it's it it's always going to be there it's never ever going to burn out and and no matter what you think or how dark it can seem it's always going to be inside there and you can find it and tap into it and it can burn bright again psychedelics or no psychedelics that's a wonderful answer yeah. i think it we is. all can agree on that <laughs> it's a lovely note to end on for sure yes. yeah <laughs> Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining. If you do want to watch the documentary, the link to it is pinned in the comments on this Facebook Live as well. So you can just click on that and it'll take you right to it. Uh, thanks again for joining us, guys. This is a lovely discussion. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great Bye -bye. day. You Bye.